So today we have a special guest in the studio. Uh, we are interviewing Simon Fowler, the dyslexic writer. Uh, so he just wrote a book, a book about his uh, about some adventures. Well, he's going to tell us what the book is all about. Okay, thank you. Uh, so the book is, is actually all about uh, a couple called uh, Jeff and Ross, and they buy a rather nice aluminium catamaran, which is all electric, and they buy it in Holland, it comes from Poland, and uh, they travel down uh, through, through uh, the UK and uh, out across the Bay of Biscay, down the coast of uh, uh, Spain and Portugal, and then they make their journey across to the Caribbean. And uh, a lot of what's in the book is uh, parts of our journey, the journey that we did on our catamaran. And so it actually sort of relates to all the harbours and uh, places that we went and uh, places like Los Roques and Grenada. And it all gets terribly exciting when everybody starts to get killed around them. And then the big thing is that halfway through the journey, Ros disappears. That's a little bit of too much information, really. Yeah, so tell us something else. Uh, so, why are you called a dyslexic writer? Well, I am dyslexic, and uh, a few years ago when we were doing our blogs uh, on our journey, um, the Facebook crowd, so quite a few of them started to get a little bit upset with my spelling and my grammar. And uh, so I call them the spelling police. And so um, I started to sign it off as a dyslexic writer, and that actually put a stop to it. And, you know, it, I've been dyslexic, dyslexic all my life, and uh, I only discovered I was dyslexic when I was uh, 45. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, it is a struggle sometimes. Sometimes you can write, and sometimes you can spell, and other times it is a complete mystery. But if I take it slowly, I did a course, and uh, if I take it slowly, and uh, I look at it again and reread it and things like that. I mean, I must have written, read my book about 25 times at least, so I kind of know it off by heart. But uh, you can actually uh, 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 sort of fight it and uh, get it under control. Mm. So in this adventure, uh, can we expect um, so, some some of the journeys relatable with what we did. When you oh, absolutely, it. yes. I mean, uh, the, the the journey from Portugal uh, down to the Canaries and then on to uh, Cape Verde and uh, across the Caribbean is all based on our journey. And a lot of people wrote to me when I was blogging and said, "Could you write a book? Because we think we would really enjoy it. Because we enjoy your writing." And that's really why I did it. So, even though this is an adventure and it's a novel, there's a lot of things in the book which are directly related to the experiences that we had uh, sailing our, our boat, Ocean Fox. And in fact, this boat's called Ocean Light. So why, why did you bother just to write the book at all, you know, because it's, it's a big task, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is, actually. Uh, I think it was always a challenge. And I came up with the idea many, many years ago when I was in Beckway. This was a long time before we had a boat. And uh, I remember seeing this guy standing at the quay in a little cafe. I was having a cup of coffee. And he was, he was, he was dressed in this black suit with a black hat and a walking stick. And he was completely out of character. And he stood there. And at this point in time, the main ferry that goes to uh, St Vincent came in. And he just looked at it and said the Beckway Express and at that point I kind of knew that that's what I wanted to call the book but I never knew what the book was about and it was only really uh, having had the time going away for a few months to Bali and places like that that uh, I can actually get get the boat the, you know the, the book formulated and it's quite interesting actually because I'd write one chapter at a time almost and then uh, I'd work out what was going to go on in the plot from there so that, that, was, that was my technique of writing it. And one chapter a day, 40 chapters, is only five weeks, isn't it? Well, that was something I found exciting to see it, because uh, you just said, I'm, I'm, I'm writing the book now, and then mm. you just go and start sitting down and write the book for the whole day. You know, well, no, it was only a few it's... hours, really, wasn't it? A couple of hours a day, I'd write a chapter, or, and then I'd go back and review the previous chapter first, so that I knew where I was in the storyline. And while I wasn't writing, I'd be thinking about what was going to happen, you know, and thinking how I could build characters into it and, and locations into the book to... Uh, make it interesting. I mean, I want the book to be for sailors and yachtsmen and adventurers and things like that. So it, 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 there is quite a lot of technical stuff in there about putting sails up, putting reefs in, how many knots they're doing, how deep the water is, how long it's going to take to get somewhere and things like that. Because I think that that makes it uh, real for the, the audience that it's aimed for, which is people that, that are interested 
in sailing and have been sailing or would like to go on a big adventure. Yeah, and you really take us along, really, because at some point on the book you just can't st stop uh, reading. You just get so yeah, sure. into the story that you have to know what happened next. I don't think it's the the, the, the best written book in the world. I, I wouldn't go there. I don't think it's ever going to be a bestseller. I just hope that some people uh, will sit back and uh, hoover up the characters and just enjoy the read. So it's available on Amazon and uh, either in, on Kindle and you can download an app if you don't actually have a Kindle you don't need a Kindle or you can buy a paperback version which is a few quid more yes so I will leave all the links on the description below so you please just click on it and enjoy the ride <laughs>